Hello everyone and welcome to this mini-series on optimal control for uh, nonlinear dynamical systems or in this case we are going to consider ordinary differential equations for now. So what is this about? Um, well, before we go into the details, well, the, the, the general question is obviously if we have a system where we do have an input, how can we pick this input in an optimal fashion? And well, we're going to start with, in this first few videos, with how to do this for, for nonlinear systems or what's the concept behind this. Then we are going to dive into uh, linear systems in a bit more detail. And then towards the end, we are going to relate this to data-driven modeling and how we can use control in combination with data for you know, complex systems control with learned dynamical systems. All right. But before we get there, let's start at the, at the very beginning. The question that we need to answer in, in the question of optimal control is how to pick u. Okay. What we've seen until now always was only the situation, okay, we do have the state, we do have an input, and then you know, we can simulate the system, make predictions, and so on. But what if I want to pick a particular input, I want to design a particular system behavior, okay? So the first question that we need to ask ourselves when we're talking about optimal control is optimal with respect to what? Okay, so until now this is a very vague, vague expression, um, but what can well, be used to heal this is the definition of an objective function. Right, we need to define an objective with respect to which we want to be optimal. Right? And we're going to use the letter J for this. So what do we have? We have this objective J. And we formulate uh, our problem in such a way that we want to minimize this J. Okay? And so one small remark, if we're talking about maximizing quantities, then it's easy enough to swap the sign. Right? So if I have a function like this that I want to minimize, then simply multiplying with minus one will give me a function like this. So a maximization problem can easily be, lead, be transformed into a minimization. So this is what we're going to use. And so obviously, right, what do we want to pick? We want to pick the u. So our objective function depends on u. And so we also need to minimize over u, okay? Um, like this, but for now, this is not complete, obviously, because what we want to do is we want to minimize subject to our dynamical constraints, right? So what we have is we have a constraint problem. So we want to minimize this subject to the system dynamics, right? And so I'm, I'm omitting the, the argument here to make it a little shorter, okay? So minimize J subject to our dynamical system. And so you see U obviously has an influence on X. So the cost function, or functional actually, because u and x are functions by themselves, is also dependent on the system state, and we are also minimizing over the system state. So this is our very general formulation of the objective that we want to achieve, okay? And so the task is, in optimal control, find a control function and the associated state that our system behaves in an optimal fashion with regard to this objective function. All right, and so it's a constrained optimization problem in functions. Constrained function optimization. All right, and so there are various ways to do this. There's a ton of literature uh, in regards to optimal control. Let me just briefly mention two approaches, and then we are going to consider only one of these, right? So two approaches that can follow, or basically it's, it's the matter of, of ordering the two steps that are necessary. So what do we need to do in order to implement this on a computer? Obviously, we require a discretization in time, okay? And then we need to solve an optimization problem. So we have the optimized step and we have the discretized step. And so the two strategies that one can follow is 
The first one is called optimize, then discretize. Right? And so what you do is you take this constraint control problem and you formulate the Lagrange function, which would be the J plus a penalty term times the constraint uh, or a Lagrange multiplier. And then you try to derive optimality conditions for the system in continuous time, so in function space. And then once you have obtained such a system, which usually consists of a differential equation of an adjoint equation for the Lagrange multiplier and a gradient equation, you discretize this gradient system in order to find an optimal function. So this is why we do optimize, then discretize, right? And a very important concept in this uh, situation is what's known as Pontryagin's maximum principle. Right, but as I said, we're not going to go into detail here. This is a topic for an entire lecture of its own. Just in case you're interested, this is the term to look for in this way. And so guess what? The other way is, you know, swapping things. So discretize, then optimize. And this is the approach that we are going to pursue here. Um, it also has the advantage that usually in data-driven approaches, we train models from time series data, so we tend to have discrete time systems anyway. So discretize and then optimize really helps us in the data-driven regime. So what we get here is we transform the control problem into a high-dimensional optimization problem. Okay, so here after discretization, what we need to solve is an optimization problem. Right? Instead of a control problem on functions, these are discrete uh, variables now. Okay, so what's left now is to talk a little bit about what's the goal behind this, okay? So what do we want to do? Uh, and so for dynamical systems, this is not an exhaustive list, but things that you usually would like to do is, say you are in point A, and you want to go to point B, right? So then what could be an objective is to go from A to B as quickly as possible. So, simply enough, um, what could also be the case is that you say go from A to B, but please follow a prescribed trajectory, right? So maybe, you know, go a specific route that has, you know, you put some knowledge in to avoid, let's say, an aircraft to avoid situations where you have turbulence and so on. Or maybe in a third situation, you could have the problem, take me to the goal or to the destination, but avoid obstacles along the way, okay? So these are typical objectives that you can have. You can also have different things like stabilizing a system. If we're talking about feedback control, right? So the system is running in real time. Um, you want to stabilize the system even though you may have disturbances from, from outside. Um, there may be economic objectives like minimizing the control input that you have, so some, some cost function, so in general cost. And there are many, many more situations that you can conceive. Also combinations of the different things and so on. So what we usually do is we formalize this J in a way that we can account for these types of objectives, right? So what we will do is we say that J of X and U is an integral from the initial condition to the final condition. And then we have this tracking type function, so it's a lowercase l function, also called state cost, that takes the state and the input at time u and then integrate these over time. So basically this is a, a, a an objective over the entire trajectory, plus in many situations you have an additional term that penalizes the final state. Okay, So you could also leave out one of these, maybe the objective might be to minimize the distance of the final state to B. Well, this is something how we could phrase it. And then what you oftentimes do is you formulate this as a problem where you have quadratic cost functions or quadratic 
uh, terms in, in, in terms of the state, okay? So what we, we don't have to do this, right? We need to ensure, obviously, that this is bounded from below so that we have a minimum. Differentiability is very, very helpful in order to use gradient methods and so on, but we are very free in, in terms of picking this. However, what's frequently done for, you know, computation purposes is to pick a quadratic um, term of tracking type. So what this means is we have a reference state and our delta x is the distance between our state x and this reference state, okay? Some position that we may want to follow. So this reference state could be these trajectories or could just be the final state maybe and so on. So what we then get in this situation is we get a function like this. Integral t0 to t n delta x of t transpose times a weight matrix Q times delta x of t plus, and then we have a second term where we have u of t transposed and an R matrix and u of t, okay? And then dt plus a final term that can be of the same structure. So we have delta um, x of t final or t end transposed a q final matrix for the final step times delta x of t e. Okay? And so this is something that is very nice because we can formulate conditions for the matrices in order for the system to be well behaved and have a good um, solution. Okay? So this q is usually a matrix in n times n, right? So in order to get this, this sort of a norm, a weighted norm of the differences. And what we usually ask of this is that this is a positive semi-definite matrix, which means that this, this quadratic form is non-negative for all x, okay? And then we ask the same for the QF, and for the R matrix, we even ask, this is now in m by m, or control dimension, and we ask of it to be positive definite even, which means u transposed r u is greater than zero for all u that are not zero, okay? And so this ensures that this is a function that is non-negative, so it's bounded from below. And this, uh, these matrix conditions, in particular the one for the u term ensures that it's um, a function that we can find a minimum of, right? And we see in linear control, um, this will give us a quadratic cost function, and with linear dynamics, you can even solve this in very ele uh, elegant and, and closed form fashion. Okay, this concludes our introduction to, to optimal control. Uh, the next video is going to cover the discrete time version of this, which is, as I said, closely related to, to data-driven techniques. And then from then on, we will move on to, you know, go into much more detail for the case of linear systems. Thanks a lot.